onions and garlic are a harmonious duo that kickstart nearly every meal in my home. This jam saves me any time I need a meal to be quick, savory, and simple, which is often. This deliciously sweet balsamic and rosemary onion jam is everything you think it is, and more. Now let me paint a picture for your taste buds. This recipe is a mix of yellow, white, and red onions that simmer in a marinade of garlic, honey, brown sugar, balsamic vinegar, and rosemary before heading off to a 10 minute water bath that'll preserve them as a shelf stable condiment for one year. But they won't last that long because you'll be constantly reaching for them to serve with nearly everything. Yes, I mean everything. Fine, I'll prove it before we get to the recipe. Here are just a couple of ways that you'll find yourself enjoying them. This jam is the ultimate sandwich condiment. I add spoonfuls on top of burger patties, meatball or sausage subs, and pita wraps. My favorite sandwich to enjoy this with is an avocado, turkey, and bacon sandwich on toasted ciabatta bread. Oh, talk about a mouthful of flavor. This jam levels up the flavor immensely. The flavor is savory, textured, and truly delicious. Yeah, that sandwich is every bit as good as it looks. I just love a good meatloaf, and this recipe will get you there in less time and almost no mess. After adding your meatloaf to your baking dish, just add your breadcrumbs, a bit of pepper, an egg, and a couple of scoops of your onion jam. This jam immediately infuses that sauteed onion and garlic taste, the honey and the brown sugar give it a little sweetness, and the balsamic and rosemary make the flavor robust. If you want a low prep filling, this is it. Meatloaf always calls for, you guessed it, mashed potatoes. What's that? Oh, did you say that you haven't tried rosemary, onion, garlic, mashed potatoes? My, my, you've been missing out. Make your potatoes as usual, but stir this on top for a delicious and different way to serve a hearty favorite. Hold on, it gets even better. Let's say you wanna serve a special dinner, so you decide to go with a steak cut. Grill it in the pan as normal and prepare a simple salad with fermented veggies topped with the marmalade dressing I showed you how to make. Then simply add your steak to your plate and spread on your onion jam. As you cut each slice, you'll have a savory mixture from the vinegar and rosemary, the classic onion and garlic taste, and sweet glaze in every bite that tastes like it made hours to make. Maybe you're just in need of a good snack. You gotta try this jam topped with a spreadable cheese and crackers. I love having this on hand for a no fuss snacking option for impromptu guests or as an easy addition to my charcuterie board. We've cracked the fancy spread code for pennies with this recipe. Your guest's mouth will drop when you casually remark, oh, I made that. This sweet balsamic and rosemary onion jam is so easy to put together. I often make a double portion of this recipe because we go through it so quickly. If I see less than four jars, I start to get nervous. And so does my husband. Now, keep in mind that these are just some of the many ways that you'll enjoy this onion jam. It's also great baked on top of salmon or chicken or any of your grilled meats. I often enjoy just spreading it to um, any of the sheet pan dinners that I make for dinner. Oh my goodness, it's also great in potato salads and pastas. Y'all, the list goes on and on. If this is our first time meeting, hi, I'm Cassandra from Becoming a Farm Girl. I share canning recipes and kitchen gardening tips for homestead dreamers. Now let's start making our sweet balsamic and rosemary onion jam. Start by peeling and dicing an equivalent of six cups of onions. The onion mix you choose is up to you and I vary mine depending on what I have on hand. I've used combinations of red, yellow, and white onions with great results. Also, how you chop your onions is your preference. 
I prefer a dice, but you could also select to slice them. It's truly a matter of aesthetic. You're going to end up with a lot of onion skins. I encourage you not to discard them. I always place my onion skins and ends in freezer bags so that I have them on hand to add extra nutrition to soups, stews, and when making bone broth or stock. Next, transfer the onions to a Dutch oven or large heavy bottom stock pot. Add a combination of brown sugar and honey on top of the onions. Now, transfer your pot to a medium-high burner on the stove. Give everything a good mix to ensure the onions are well coated with the sugar and honey. While your onions are softening on the stove, measure out your red cooking wine and balsamic vinegar. Add your liquids to the pot. your pectin, and pepper to taste. You'll want to cover and cook your onions for 20 minutes, stirring occasionally, until your onions are completely soft. Keep an eye on them. Now cut a couple of tablespoons of freshly sliced garlic to add to the pot. Once you notice half of the liquid has evaporated, it's time to add the rosemary. These are sprigs of rosemary from my garden. I prefer to use an herb sachet so that I get the flavor, but only have the texture and look of the onions and garlic. This is completely your preference. I do recommend using fresh rosemary to truly get that vibrant taste. Once you notice the liquid has mostly evaporated and the taste, texture, and syrupy thickness you prefer is achieved, Cut the heat. It's now time to can our jam in an easy 10 minute water bath. But you don't have to because this recipe will last for three months in your fridge. Whether it will be around for that long is another thing. Start by sterilizing your jars, which is a quick and easy process. You can run the jars through a quick clean or sterilization cycle in your dishwasher, or hand wash and rinse the jars, dry them and place them without lids or rings in a 200 degrees oven for 10 minutes. Now it's time to fill your jars. Grab your funnel and ladle that onion jam goodness into the jars, leaving a quarter of an inch of headspace. Remove any air bubbles by running a long plastic or wooden skewer between the jar and the jam. Wipe the rims of the jars with vinegar or water to remove any spillage. Any residue can prevent your jars from creating a seal. Secure the ring to the top of your jar until it's fingertip tight. Secured, but air still has room to pass through. Now let's process our jam on the stove. Using a jar rack or plate, lower the jars into your water bath canner. Now I'm using my pressure canner simply because it's always on my stove, but you can use any deep pot with a regular lid. Once your jars are inside the pot, pour in water to ensure that it covers at least an inch above your jars. Place the lid on your pot. Bring the water to a boil for 10 minutes. Then using a jar lifter, remove the jars out of the water and let them cool on a towel for a minimum of eight hours. As your jars cool, you'll hear them making clicking pops. Leave the jars undisturbed on a towel for a minimum of 12 to 24 hours. After that, you can confirm that the jars have sealed by removing the rings. A sealed jar lid will remain secured to the jar without the rim and be slightly indented in the center. Use your index finger to moderately tap on the jar in a few places. 
It should not pop back when pressed. The majority of your jars will seal within a couple of hours of cooling down. If you have any jars that didn't seal properly, just store them in the fridge and use them within three months. Your canned jam will be shelf stable and keep unopened for up to one year. If you're craving more onion jam recipes, check out my equally delicious and easy sweet and spicy onion jam, which will quickly become another one of your favorites. To get more canning and kitchen gardening tips for your homestead, meet me here weekly. I'll see you in my kitchen or garden soon. Take care.